In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at the difference between the broadcast and emit functions in AngularJS. Uh, to make use of Angular, you'll have to include it in your web page, as I have done here. I'm including it from a popular CDN. You can uh, download a copy to your own web server and reference it from there if you would like. Okay, now let's take a look at this Angular application that I have here. Um, I have an ng app here with my application being called my app and I've got several controllers set up. Now notice that I've got we have Alpha Controller, Bravo Controller, and Charlie Controller. These three controllers here are all siblings and then underneath Alpha Controller we have First Controller and Second Controller. First Controller and Second Controller are siblings to each other and both of them are also child controllers of Alpha Controller. So what we want to do is we, under, we want to understand what broadcast and emit do. Basically what they allow us to do is to transmit messages from a parent scope to a child scope or from a child scope back up to the parent scope. Now coming down here to our code, we're going to see where I have a function here called getController. And basically what we do is we pass a controller name into this and then it's going to return out a controller function with that name being used. And what we've done here is we've, we're going to set up each controller to pay attention to a, um, to a broadcast or an emit of type message. And if they receive that, then they're going to output to the console the name of the controller and the message that was received. We're also saving a copy of all of the scopes here to this scope object called all scopes. This will make it easier for us to reference a particular scope and send a message from that scope. Now coming down here you can see where I've actually registered all of my controllers, Alpha Controller, Bravo Controller, Charlie first and second. And so this is going to set up the controller functions for each one of these. And then down here we have a run block for the application where we're going to pass in the timeout service as well as the root scope service. Now the root scope we're going to treat just like we did these um, other scopes up here. We're actually going to set it up to handle the message event and we're also going to set it up to be able, actually we're going to take the root scope and save it to our object of scopes. Now down here what I want to do to demonstrate broadcast first is I actually want to broadcast a message from the root scope and I want you to see what it looks like in the browser console when that message is broadcast. So to broadcast this we're going to do root scope dot dollar sign broadcast and then we're going to call it message and then we're going to specify some options. The option we're going to specify is message. So we're going to say root scope broadcast. And we're going to save that. And the reason we're setting this up to run after one second is we just want to make sure the entire Angular page is set up and ready to go. And then in a separate task on the event loop, actually, um, actually have this uh, do the broadcasting of the message. So now let's go ahead and switch over to our web page and let's reload. And after a second we're going to see that the root scope, which is what we broadcasted our message from, it was the first one to receive its own message. So as you can see when we do broadcast and emit, the actual scope that we do the broadcasting and emitting from also handles the message as well. We actually go from the alpha controller to the first controller, to the second controller, to Bravo controller, and then to Charlie. It follows a depth first traversal. So basically it starts at this first controller and then does its children. And then of course it does the Bravo controller and Charlie, which are siblings of the Alpha controller. But as you can see, this message was actually broadcast from, from, from the root scope all the way down through all of the child scopes, including the children of children. And so all of them were able to receive this broadcast message. Now, let's set this up to do an emit. And now for the emit, we're going to set it up like this. We're going to come in here and say all scopes. And then we're going to say second control. And what this is going to do, this is going to reference the second controller scope, which we saved up here when we originally set up second controller. We're going to say second controller, we're going to say dollar sign emit. We're going to pass in the type of message that we're going to be emitting up. And then we're going to specify the actual message here. 
So we'll say second control emit. Put a semicolon. And now we're going to save this. And we're going to reload our page. And then as we can see here, we started off by emitting from second controller. And then that went up to alpha controller, its parent, which ultimately went up to the root scope, which is alpha's, alpha controller's parent. What's important to observe here is that when we emit the message up, notice that no siblings are involved. When we emit it up, second controller's sibling, first controller, did not receive the message. Also, alpha controller's siblings did not receive the message. So there is no message here being received by Bravo or Charlie controller. The message literally goes straight up the line of parents all the way up to the root scope. So broadcast broadcast from the root scope down to all the children and the children of children. And the emitting emits all the way up from a child all the way up to the parent not involving any of the siblings. So this is one of the ways in which scopes can communicate with each other in AngularJS.